In the lesson about map building functions, I showed you how to add some features to your map by hand. In fact, there are many situations for which it is more practical to digitize the features rather than actually going out there to record their GPS positions. Suppose you have thousands of acres of timber tracks and stands that you would like to present on a map. One way of accomplishing this is to load a registered aerial photo of that region into PCGPS and digitize these tracks and stands on top of the aerial photo. As an example, look at the tree farm map that we created in the lesson on georeferencing. This map contains an aerial photo that we have registered against a set of control points. I wish to digitize the woodland paths and the timber stands on this tree farm. I would also like to mark the locations of the church buildings. I have turned off the sheet view to provide more space for displaying the map. I select the tree farm topic and click on the zoom to topic icon to maximize my view of the tree farm. To digitize the pathways, I click the Add Road icon in the Project Toolbar and then select the Woodland Line Style. Notice that PCGPS has automatically added the roads topic. I choose the No Snap mode and drag or click my mouse along this pathway. I click my right mouse button to end this pathway. I use the same method to add the other two pathways. When adding a line feature, you may click or drag the mouse along the pathway. Click on the right mouse button to end each line feature. I'm doing this quickly, but you can take your time and zoom in to see more details. To digitize a planted area, I click the stand icon in the project toolbar. I'll start with the fir trees on the west side. For this stand number one, I enter fir as its description. I choose to digitize the stand. I select the include line area boundary mode to make use of the pathway that I have previously digitized. I will click on the starting node, move over the pathway, then click on the last node I wish to include from this pathway. Then I'll click the starting node on the second pathway and click on the ending node. Now I switch to the no snap mode and click on this corner by the mode grass. I move up and click on the closing point. Then I press the right mouse button to complete the timber stand feature. When PCGPS prompts me if I wish to digitize another stand, I click on yes. For this stand of spruce trees, I will start by including part of the pathway that runs down the center of the tree farm. In the include line area boundary mode, I click on the beginning and ending nodes that I wish to include from this pathway. I click on the beginning and ending nodes of the small pathway to include them also. Then I switch to the no snap mode to continue digitizing the stand. In the no snap mode, you may digitize a timber stand by clicking along its boundaries. To save time, I always try to make use of existing features. So I switch to the include line area boundary mode and click on this pathway. The highlighted boundary is not what I want. So I click and hold down the left mouse button at the ending node and click the right mouse button. This causes the complement of the proposed boundary to be included in my area feature. I will right click to complete this second timber stand. You won't have this kind of problem when you digitize in the same direction as the boundary you are including. However, 
Whenever you go against the direction in which an included boundary was formed, you will need to use this trick to select the portion of the boundary that you want. PCGPS asks me if I wish to digitize another stand. I answer yes. I will enter pine as the description for the third stand of trees. I will start by including this small pathway. Then I switch to the no snap mode and continue by clicking along the boundary of the timber stand. Oops, wrong click. To erase this bad node, I hold down the control key, then click on the map. Now I can continue to digitize the stand of fir trees. Here I switch to the Include Line Area Boundary mode. Again, to include the correct portion of this pathway, I hold down the left mouse button at the ending node and then right click. I release the left mouse button and click on the right mouse button again to complete this area feature. To indicate the locations of the church buildings, I'll use the Add Structures icon and select the large building symbol. Then I'll simply click on each building in the no snap mode. I would like you to use your tree farm map to practice heads up digitizing. When you have finished digitizing the tree stands, Turn off the treefarm.jpg topic. With the stands topic selected, you may turn on the sheet view to look at the attributes of these timber stands. These are the standard attributes created for the stands topic. You may add other attributes as you wish. If you have entered descriptions for the timber stands, you may use the Settings tool to classify them by description. In the Auto Classification section, click the Change button. Select Description as the criterion for classifying the timber stands. I'm going to accept the default color assignments. Select the Apply to this job option, then click the OK button. Now you can easily differentiate among the three timber stands by their different colors. To display the topic classes in Topic View, click on the Show Topic Classes icon. Please save your treefarm.fmp file for later use. Here is an outline of the Heads Up Digitizing procedure for your reference.